What's up everybody, it's Sean here and I'm here today to give you guys a review of the Air Jordan 1 Retro High OG Craft in this Vibrations of Nyjah colorway. So this is part of the Air Jordan Craft series, which we've seen this year on the Air Jordan 4 and the 5. So this version of the Air Jordan 1, according to some sneaker websites, pays homage to Nigeria, but based off of Nike's official description, they don't mention any ties directly to Nigeria, and they just call it the Sale and Pale Vanilla colorway. So this shoe released on May 27th for a price of 180 US dollars or 235 dollars here in Canada. And the official colorway for this shoe is Sale, Pale Vanilla, and Black. And here in Canada, these were released at most major sneaker boutiques, such as The Closet Inc. The Closet Inc. is my go-to shop for Nike releases and Air Jordan retros, and they're independently owned and operated based right here in Southern Ontario in Canada. So for all my Canadian viewers out there, I'll link their website, their Twitter, their Instagram, all that good stuff down below. So be sure to check them out, support the independent shops, and be sure to tell them that I sent you. So first things first, here's a quick look at the box. So this comes in a cream and white colored cardboard box, but it looks otherwise just like your standard Air Jordan 1 packaging. So we have Nike branding on the very top lid, as well as on the side of the box too. So as far as the shoe goes, this is built pretty much like your standard Air Jordan 1 high. The upper of the sneaker is constructed out of a lightly tumbled, off-white colored leather, and just like any other Air Jordan 1, we have these perforations found all across the toe box. Surrounding the front toe cap, we have another overlay of this tumbled white leather, and this leather was surprisingly pretty good quality. On the edges, you can see they painted it this light yellow color, which adds to the whole vintage appeal of this shoe. Moving downwards, you can see we have that same leather, which covers the eye stays of the sneaker, as well as the mid panel underneath this. And then stitched on top of this, we have the Nike swoosh. And this is constructed in a very interesting material and one that I've never really seen before. When you look at it real close up, it almost looks like a glued down terry cloth or chenille like material. And some people have been calling it cork, but to me, it doesn't really feel like cork whatsoever. So you can see that same material covers the top ankle collar area of the sneaker. And then underneath this, the side flaps or wings of the shoe. This is again constructed out of the off-white tumbled leather. And then pressed onto the lateral side, we have the Air Jordan Wings logo, which is done in this pale vanilla color. And then surrounding the back of the shoe, we have another overlay of that slightly tumbled leather. In terms of laces, Jordan brand mixed things up a bit, giving us an oval shaped lace done in this pale vanilla color instead of the traditional flat laces. However, if you're not feeling these laces, they do give you an extra pair of flat laces if you want to give it more of that classic look. But to me, I actually like these oval laces, and I'm probably going to leave them as is. Underneath this, we have your traditional nylon tongue, which is done in this white color. And on the very top, we have this tag with Nike Air branding. And this is woven in that same mix of black and vanilla, which matches the look of the swoosh and the collar. And then the edges of the tongue are covered in this pale vanilla colored nylon, which I feel completes the look of the tongue perfectly. The inner collar of the shoe is lined in that same pale vanilla colored textile, and this collar is lightly padded. And as far as the insoles go, so these come with a polyurethane foam insole, it's covered in a pale vanilla colored textile on the top, and we have Nike Air branding pressed onto the heel. So the upper of these Air Jordan 1s sits atop a solid rubber cup sole, and encased within this cup sole but not visible to the eye, we do have a Nike Air unit underneath the heel for cushioning. And then turning this pair over to the bottom, this is your classic Air Jordan 1 outsole. And in this case, it's crafted out of a vanilla colored rubber, and we have this circular pivot point on the forefoot, along with Nike branding found right in the middle. So that breaks down the look and the construction of this pair. And for those wondering about sizing, my foot measures as a true size 10, slightly on the wider side. I got these in a size 10, which is my typical Air Jordan 1 high size. So I'd recommend sticking true to size unless you have a really, really wide foot, then you might want to consider going up a half size. But I'm assuming anyone watching this video has probably tried on a pair of Jordan 1 highs before. So whatever size you normally go with, I'd stick with that exact same size for this pair as well. Moving on to the comfort. So these feel like any other Air Jordan 1. The underfoot feeling is a bit more on the firm and flatter side. There's not too much from a softness and stepping comfort perspective. But as of right now, Jordan 1s are pretty much universally worn for casual use. So for that purpose, they're going to be perfectly fine. Just don't expect anything too soft and too cushioned. Then I think they'll line up perfectly in line with your expectations. Last but not least, in terms of the overall quality and the craftsmanship. So first off, material quality I was very impressed with. This leather that they use feels very nice and soft to the touch, but it definitely feels like a decent quality leather as far as Jordan brand materials go. And I know a lot of people weren't big fans of the material used on the swoosh and the collar, but honestly to me, I didn't think it was that bad whatsoever. Especially when you look at it from afar, it sort of just looks like a darker beige tone. And for me at least, seeing the details up close, 
I kind of felt like I appreciated the shoe a little bit more. And from a build and craftsmanship standpoint, I thought the build of the shoe was pretty decent. The stitch job was good, no visible glue stains, the paint job was solid as well. I just noticed that my left foot and the right foot, it wasn't perfectly aligned around this area right here where the toe box starts. So this is just one of those things that you commonly see on Jordan 1s. It's definitely not the first time I've seen it for me. It's just unfortunate that it's come down to this when it comes to Jordan brand products, that the consumer kind of expects there to be a certain amount of flaw. So I don't know if that speaks more to Jordan brand as a brand or us as consumers, but anyways, it is what it is. And hopefully your pairs were free of any flaws. So with all that out of the way now, let me toss these on feet. I'll lace them up and I'll show you guys how these look. I know as of right now, the hype surrounding the Jordan 1 is pretty much dead. It takes a lot for a Jordan 1 colorway to really sell out, so it's no surprise that this colorway is pretty much sitting across the board at all retailers online and in-store. But if you're a fan of the shoe, that's definitely a good thing. I'm sure these will be marked down eventually and go on sale, so I'd recommend waiting and not paying full retail price for this shoe, especially if it's a shoe that you can definitely live without, but it's just one of those nice to have shoes to have in your collection if you can get it for the right price. For me, honestly, I'm a fan of this colorway. I love the materials as well. I think they feel very premium in hand, and it's just one of those simple and easy shoes to wear that you can pull off with a ton of different outfits. So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about this Vibrations of Nyjah or Air Jordan 1 Craft colorway. What are your overall thoughts on this pair? And for anyone watching, have you picked up a pair of these? Are you waiting for these to go on sale? Or are you just not a fan of it whatsoever? If you guys like this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. You can follow me on Instagram as well at esco8, check out my Twitter page at sean.go, and visit my website at seango.ca. So until next time, thanks so much for watching, another shout out goes out to The Closet Inc, and I'll catch you guys all in my next review.